Okay, hello everyone. So this is the demonstrations for the lab wing test. Um, so this is the uh, the lab wing uh, equipment. Uh, you come with two main parts. First, uh, you have a handle here. So this one is a lot. When you turn this handle on the top, this handle is for us to adjust the positions of the wing. So as you can see, uh, the lab wings come with is right here on this part so this is the ring and like on the top you can turn the handles to adjust the positions of the uh, the ring and if we keep uh, pushing this down then we can uh, push insert uh, this ring into the soil so this ring is kind of like a like a a, a blade that uh, to push into the soils so you see like uh, this come with like a uh, sharp edge that uh, push into the soils and um, the second part of this device here is you can we can turn this ring so this ring is also uh, controlled by this crank here so if you turn this, pretty much like uh, we can rotate this wing. So first, like, you know, we, we have on the top, on the top, we will lower the wing into the soils. And then uh, after just go into the soils, then we can turn this wing such that we can start like a uh, do our rotations. So the, the idea is the wing is uh, you have a blade into the soils and the soils will resist uh, the turning, the movement of the ring when we uh, try to crane this. And uh, when we crane this, we have a dial here on top. So as you can see, there's a, uh, a dial reading here. So this is a dial readings uh, for us to keep track of how much of ro angle rotations. So before we start, uh, it's supposed to be a zero, zero positions. So now this is like a zero zero positions. So when we keep turning this, so on the way that I'm turning this, so now we I am at an angle of uh, five degree. So you can keep from the zero to zero is offset by five. So I'm at five degree. So this is the pointer uh, for for the use of uh, when to uh, stop the test. But the reading should be just focused on the scale here at this at this point. So zero to zero to zero, we have a five degree separations. Um, so the way it works is uh, when we keep turning this, we can monitor uh, the angle of rotations through the scale here. And what happened is uh, uh, when this one is turned, this the blade is into the soil. So soil is resisting the movement even though we are turning this. So uh, all the energy now is, uh, all, the, uh, all, all the force of the torque is, uh, is stored on in the spring. So we were able to uh, convert, if we know the, or actually we know um, the stiffness of the spring, then uh, knowing the stiffness here and knowing the rotations there, uh, we can calculate the torque, the torque of, uh, of the uh, amount of force that like uh, uh, we store in the spring that actually is resisted by the uh, the soil. So the torque pretty much is like the strength of the of the soils. So this is the idea of leveling. And um, so what when we do the test, so first thing we will lower the ring into the soils. So we will lower the ring until to a point that uh, the upper upper top here of the ring is at least half inch into our soils. So we push this in, now the ring is in, and the next thing is uh, we will uh, keep track with the pointer that uh, we talked about here before. So here is, uh, you have the, the pointer right here. So we keep turning the crank until we see a uh, separations between uh, the pointer and the, the shaft. So 
So this part pretty much like you know this part is is, is attached to the uh, to the wing. So the whole thing, the vertical stop, shaft stop here, and this is kind of like a reference point. So we keep turning it until the point that this two got separated. Then we so you see the this is no separations, but now this is have a separations. So until this two separate, then uh, we know uh, the saw has failed. So that's the uh, idea of the uh, wing shear test. And um, for data interpretations, what we do is we will record the angle of difference there. Okay, so I also want you to show you uh, how they want the test. Uh, but before that, let's talk about the spring. So um, this is, we have, uh, depends on the, uh, the, the stiffness of the soil that you expect. Uh, you can change the spring. So, so the spring is, is kind of like, you know, correlate with the stiffness of the soils. So if you have a relative like a weak soil, so you want to have, uh, you know, have uh, use a, a spring that has a smaller stiffness. So it gives you the good resolutions when you uh, uh, do the test. But if you have a very steep spring, then you may want to change the spring. So the spring can can go like uh, as soft as uh, something like this, or as stiff as something like that. So we have a different type of spring, and um, uh, perhaps like uh, you know, I will have like relatively stiff soils that you work on. It's quite dry for this compacted clay. So I what I try to do now is try to install a stiff, uh, relatively st uh, stiff spring and see uh, what kind of results that we have. So I install my 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 spring my spring there, and then this is my vertical shaft go into. Uh, the setup, and uh, before I start, make sure I go back to the zero zero positions. But now this is at uh, so at this point, some people see that um, we're at zero zero positions. You can see here, so this aligned at zero zero. And the pointer and the shaft is engaged it. So that's like a no separations between so we can see this better maybe from this angle. So the shaft and the pointer there's no separations be between the two. And then uh, make sure I also install my uh, my ring. And then what are we doing now is lower my blade, my wind. So the top part need to be at least like a half inch into my saw examples. And then I can start, uh, make sure the pointer is engaged. And then I can start turning this at a constant rate. And then meanwhile, just keep an eye uh, on the pointer and the shaft. Make sure there's uh, separations uh, when it happens, I can catch it. So I keep turning this as a constant rate for SDM standard. And then now at a point, when I see a separations, then I should stop. So at 30 degree, so we are within like a 30 degree right there. I see a separations between um, the pointer and the shaft. So I know the failure happens already. And we will take the angle 30 degree. Um, 
to calculate the torque. And uh, in the uh, data interpretations, uh, we talk more about this, and we will also post the data on the Google Sheet. As mentioned earlier, we have four springs of differing stiffness. The relationship between the torque and angle of the lap vein differs for each spring as shown in the graph. Our x value is the torque and our y value is the degree given by the lap vein. For this demonstration, we use the stiffest spring in this graph, S4, with a correlation of y equals 80x. With an angle of 30 degrees, we get a torque of 0 0.375 kilogram centimeter, or roughly 0 0.03 pound-feet. If we assume the diameter and height of the vein to be half an inch, we should calculate an undrained shear strength of about 180 pounds per square foot. Next will be the pocket penetrometer. The pocket penetrometer is an inexpensive handheld device that reports the unconfined compressive strength of the soil. The reading is marked by the plastic band. To start the test, slide the band to the zero mark. We will then insert the penetrometer into the soil up to the groove. In this demonstration, the reading for this test was about 3.9 kilograms per square centimeter. From the pocket penetrometer, we can test the unconfined compressive strength of the soil specimen. To get the undrained shear strength, we divide the unconfined compressive strength by 2, with a reading of 3.9 kilograms per square centimeter. Our undrained shear strength is 1.95 kilograms per square centimeter. Lastly, we will be talking about the tor vein. In our lab, the tor vein has three different vein sizes, and depending on which vein we use, we will have either a ratio of 2.5, 1, or 0 0.2. After choosing our vein size, we zero the dial on a tor vein and insert the vein blades into the soil specimen. Turn on tilt failure. It is recommended that failure occur within 5 to 10 seconds. In this demonstration, we used a standard vein size with a ratio of 1, so our shear value is 8 kilograms per square centimeter. 